wooden fucking villains that is like, ha ha, I want to stick up the world. And then yeah, yeah. the fucking protagonist comes is like, yeah, I do dope shit and I stop you. And that's the way we Except do Except for thing. Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze. I feel like he gets... He gets <laughs> Everybody uh, yeah. freeze. I did enjoy... <laughs> Uh, Suicide Squad, man. Let's do it right now. We need to talk about Suicide Squad. Okay. Um, Look, I'm going to give my thoughts, but I'm very curious to hear what you thought of this. uh, Everybody knows what the fuck the Suicide Squad is. It's, or at least they should know what Suicide Squad is. It's um, a band of villains who the government gets together and says, hey, do this shit for us or we're going to kill you. They're like, all right, well, that sounds like not a choice. So I'll go ahead and (laughs) do the thing for you. Uh, and, uh, this is the second of the, you know, uh, live action Suicide Squad movies that we've gotten. The first one sucked. Let's just never mention it. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is sort of like a soft reboot of the series. Uh, it doesn't necessarily erase everything that happened before, if not like in a true sense of literally they just ignore it, but they literally basically erased it within like the first five, Hey, spoiler alert for anybody who, you know, might be worried about spoilers, might not want to listen to this podcast. In general, don't listen to this podcast if you're concerned about spoilers. Okay, yeah. we will spoil everything for you. Um, but uh, but yeah, within like the first like five minutes of the film, they basically erase <laughs> everything that happened uh, within uh, with the or not erase, but just did away with uh, everything that happened in, in the first movie. Uh, I was what are your surprised thoughts? at how quickly it's like when the movie started. Um, I had to pause it for a second because I'm like, yo, this shit's happening very <laughs> You're like, did fast. I miss something? Am I, were you high? Were you watching it? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. Because that, that would have been a trip. If you're like, wait, did I just miss half the yeah, movie? I think it was halfway <laughs> through I started smoking. But okay. like, but when it first started, it started so <laughs> fast. And I'm, I'm used to movies starting quickly. But this movie started so fucking fast mm-hmm. that I had to stop it for a second and like be like, okay, I am only a minute and 54 seconds in. Like, so I'm not yeah. in the wrong place. I'm in the right place. It's just yeah. happening very fast. Uh, Addy, go to the, uh, just go to the, um, the full screen of the, um, uh, of the media. Cool. So, uh, my initial thoughts about the movie, right? Uh, yeah, that's what you're looking for here. Overall, I think this movie was entertaining. I think it was uh, it, it was fun to watch. I appreciated the fact that this movie didn't take itself too seriously. There were lots of moments throughout this film that seemed like just so gimmicky. I remember when like um, when uh, so it, it was Bloodsport played by Idris Elba, uh, Peacemaker, and uh, Polka Dot. They were all going to save Harley Quinn played by Margot Robbie. Mm-hmm. Um, and like it was just so like I remember they were like running across the street and it just seemed like yo we have no idea what we're doing we're just gonna and uh, Rick Flag obviously but like I remember the scene of them like r- running across the street kind of like they're in like the like a cheesy do it yourself kind of movie right yeah. um, and I really liked how uh, again the lightheartedness about the film like in Margot Robbie like she had that storyline right where she's like after she kills the president of that country and she's like on her mission to break out of the jail and she's killing all those people with um the uh with the staff that she got from what was that guy's name uh uh javelin Mm -hmm. right um you know the animated characters and the flowers and whatnot like I feel like in those moments of the movie, like you realize like I, this film is not taking itself too seriously. Yeah. It's really just meant to be like a great watch, have fun with this stuff. But you know, there's, we're still trying to tell a story here. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciated that. Is this, are you going to take anything away from this movie? Is there, are you going to learn a deeper part of yourself after having watched this movie? Yeah. Is it going to bring you and your loved ones closer together? No. <laughs> you and your no, loved ones no, it's it's fucking not. <laughs> but are you going to have a, a good time watching this movie if you mm-hmm. really don't think too much about it. I think so. Now, now the curious part that I, that I would have with your um, assessment is how hmm, how am I trying to say this? How would you rate the movie? And go on extended because I actually need to hop over in the yeah, control yeah, yeah. real quick. So go on extended take with this. So how would I rate this movie? Right, I think the first thing you have to do is um, take a step back, right? Because we're not going to rate this movie in the same way that we would rate um, uh, the Green Knight or fucking Gone with the Wind, <laughs> right? 
Have you ever even watched Gone with the Wind? Um, I, I think my mom made me watch it at a point in time. <laughs> I remember my mom had this like poster of the film in her bedroom when we were younger, but I don't even really think she like watch the whole thing i just think it was like a poster that they, they had a, at like the flea market and it was like you know what fuck it i'll put that on my wall um but like you're not gonna rate this movie in the same way you'd rate a more like serious dramatic like film with a real story to tell um i'm looking at this film i'm, I'm rating it against the last one i'm rating it, it against like some of the other superhero mashup films right infinity war endgame batman versus superman I'm rating it against those things. So, in that category, in this like superhero genre, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but like the misfit superheroes, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, this movie way better than the last Suicide Squad. Well, okay. So, so I guess what I'm really trying to get at is, I would uh, give it a B plus. Okay, B plus. But like, say uh, on uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, the last I checked, it was. It was rated like 91% or something mm-hmm. like that on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you think that it holds up to that that score? Again, like if we are if we're rating this like as just a film of all films, probably not. But if we're rating this, if we're viewing this film in its genre of film, putting it against some of the other like superhero mashup movies, um, do I think like this is maybe one of the better uh, movies of this kind that I've seen? Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, like again, I'm, I'm looking at this. And I look at it at the same light that I look at the boys. Yeah, right. Uh, hold on, on Amazon. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at this in the same way that I look at Infinity War and Endgame, which were more serious movies. But like, I would give this a B plus based off of uh, the, the 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 genre, the category of film this is in, and I think that Rotten Tomatoes' score is fine so long as we're being realistic with like how we're looking at this movie. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, keep going. <laughs> Listen, I got a lot to say. I keep going. Um, so one of my favorite things that this movie did well, uh, I mean, the fucking cast, first of all, was stellar. Margot Robbie, while I didn't love her in, in Birds of Prey, I think she did a great job. And we're jumping into characters here. I think she does a great job at playing Harley Quinn. I don't know who could have did it better. Idris Elba as Bloodsport. Um, love the fact that there were times when he took himself seriously and like the, you know, uh, James Gunn took that character seriously mm-hmm. when he's like fully decked out in, in, in the suit and he really does look like this intimidating guy. But there's times when he just has a mask on and he's like plopping around the city trying to save Margot Robbie as, as Harley Quinn. Yeah. And you could tell like no one's really taking this whole thing too seriously. I mean, you know, th- there's, well, there's the fucking Shark King. You know who the Shark King was played by? Yeah, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. I remember telling you that okay. when we watched the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I, no one's trying to be seriously. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, so okay, let, let me tell you what I loved about the film. What I loved about the film is is that <clears throat> it corrected a lot of the errors that the first film made in that it, it gave it a story that wasn't... Um, the story itself, like I love what you said about it not taking itself too seriously, but I think where specifically it corrected that is that it didn't... It didn't take the story too seriously. I think it took the characters more or less seriously, right? Yeah. Um, but it didn't take the story too seriously, right? But the, it, it, while I think that's a plus for the film, it was also the thing that I found to be a little bit of a negative. I, the, the reason why I brought the Rotten Tomatoes score up is because I don't think if if they if Rotten Tomatoes came out and was like this movie's like a somewhere between a seventy five and eighty percent. I'd have been like, or even somewhere in the 80s, like 80, uh, 75 to 85%, right? I'd have been like, that is the perfect score for this movie. But say that it's 91%, that's an A film. That's that's a, this film had barely any, if at all, flaws uh, in it, right? I don't know if I can rate this film that, you know? And, and, the, and the reason being is because... Uh, it, it 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 produced the greatest flaw that you can produce in any sort of superhero movie. What it and, I, and I, this isn't a test, but um, what do you think is the greatest? If you're to like you know the commonality between all superhero movies, what's the thing that jumps out to you the most, differentiating between one superhero movie to the other? What, what's the, wait wait what's, what's the, the commonality or what's what, the differentiator? No no no. What's what's the thing that makes you rate this superhero movie higher than another? Like what's the what's the difference for you? 
I would say like story, like like what is like story and like the you know uh, your your favorite word here the character arc right <laughs> like you love that shit you're gonna hear that a lot tonight or or, or um what is the other thing you used to say like like the genesis <laughs> those are your fucking favorite words those are, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like um you know there there has to be like a story and they have to give me a reason to like believe in the story or believe in the characters and like their purpose um i don't think suicide squad really gave us uh, like a reason to believe in their purpose because none mm-hmm. of them believe none of the characters believe in their purpose they're just on a mission blood sport his only reason for doing this was to help his daughter out uh and right. a lot of the other characters their only reason for doing this thing was to like reduce time on their sentence right. so like, even they weren't even they <clears throat> didn't care about th- what the purpose is but to your point yeah um what james gunn did here really well is like they made you really like and like fall in love with some of the characters right yeah and i think sure. that's what every superhero movie that, like that's what some of the best superhero movie does we right. know they're fake characters we know they're not real um we know that like you know these are superheroes that are it's all fantastical but can you humanize them in a way that like i can identify with and like i can i can you know i, I can form some type of bond with the characters of the film a- absolutely and i and i uh for the most part or wholly like agree with what you're saying that they he did a good job at humanizing um the protagonist of the film the fatal flaw that he has though is for me um and 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 so shout out to uh, lessons from the screenplay even though you know you didn't i was trying to do an interview with you and you didn't uh you you weren't taken at the time but fair enough yeah, it's fine um <laughs> but uh but shout out to lessons from the screenplay because this is kind of the first time that i really sort of grasped this concept is that when you're dealing with movies like this right not just superhero movies but just like these these sort of like heroic movies overall right really how they're judged and whether you know it or not that, that you're you're kind of internalizing this they're judged by their villains or their antagonists that's who makes or breaks the film is how well are you painting your antagonist for the film, right? Because that's where you're, that's that's where the the friction from the film comes from. It's not from the protagonist. The protagonist is the person you're like cheering for. They're the person, you know, maybe they're an anti-hero and you're like, all right, they're doing bad shit, but they're a good person deep down inside. Yada yada. You can create whatever picture you want for the protagonist, and that, that has to be good on its own, right? But really, the the film is is um, it lives and dies by its antagonist it's a villain you know um they're not always synonymous but but you know the 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 rule still stands and i think that's the fatal flaw that this movie had is that its villains are really this wooden and honestly confusing so for instance this movie had like four different villains in it and none of them were particularly good (laughs) um so you have starro it's like i guess you could point to you as like the main villain of the film right um, yeah. Okay. But that, and and I'm not saying that Star wasn't an interesting, if not, it, it was an interesting choice uh, uh, for a villain. Like it's a weird, quirky choice that is falls in line with James Gunn's style, right? And there's even a, a little bit in there where it's just like uh, Star. I think says at some point, like, "Yo, dude, I'd have been chill in outer space. Like, you guys fucked my shit up. I was just chilling." And then you guys scooped me up. So you have yourself to blame for this, basically. Yeah, you said something like, I, I, you know, like, I remember just, like, staring out at the stars and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. Like, now, basically, now I'm here and you guys have, like, done all this shit to me. So now I'm the villain. But I really wasn't supposed to be. And, and, uh, you know, he put that in the film. Even with that, though, Star was still kind of a wooden uh, villain um, in that case. But you also had the i guess the spanish government <laughs> or the mexican government maybe well no no it was the, the maltese, oh, the maltese, the maltese, yeah, sure, maltese. Sure. Yeah, um, yeah dude you need to step your geography up <clears throat> well where's where's maltese located um isn't maltese uh off the coast of like france that means you don't know for sure well maltese uh, malta is isn't off the coast of like uh it's it's not too far from like france you are correct right yes okay yeah. okay yeah Step your geography up. I, Listen, he's not as worldly as we are. You, you, you're, not going to, you're not going to. You're not going to find an objection to that for me. I will agree with you on this. Um, Malta is a beautiful island. I was surprised that this movie took place. Like you know, that that was like the destination for this film. For the movie, yeah, yeah. it was an interesting choice, um, and it's been used in, in some other films uh, 
as well. Yeah, but, one of my favorite shows, uh, Queen of the Queen of uh, uh, Queen of the South. Queen yeah, the, South, yeah. the whole season takes place there. I think. Um, but uh, you, you might point to the the Maltese government, right? As like, okay, they're kind of the villains here as well, right? But then that gets flipped up, like, oh, it's actually America, America, which is usually the, the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which is typically uh, the, the case. But even that was like a little like it was thrown in there and as as a very specific um, political statement, I feel like it was very um, it was very pointed, you know, and very like look in the mirror kind of scenario. And that they're basically were like, hey, you can say what you will about other countries, but really, you know, nobody fucking trumps America when it comes to fucking shit up (laughs) and making shit worse around the world and any sort of like bad shit. America generally has their hands in it somehow, you know, um, is, is, is typically the case, you know. Um, but even that felt like kind of like um, ham fisted, I guess, is, is maybe the, the phrase that I want to use. Like it, it felt very sort of like lumped in there versus like strategically placed, although I'm sure it was strategically placed, but it felt it felt like it, it while everything else or while there are some other things in the film that felt like it was like. Okay, you can read the subtext. Like, so for instance, Shark, uh, the King Shark. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of things that were like subtext with King Shark that you just had to like. Oh, with how he looks at the, you know, everybody makes a big deal about how he looked at the couple who were like making out or whatever or together, and he, you can see that as him wanting a relationship or wanting at least friendship, you know, and it's just he's not able to find that because of who he is, yeah. right? That's subtext. What they did with the Americas, like the kind of the evil people here that wasn't subsex that was just them saying hey america's really evil <laughs> you know which wasn't it fe- that felt wooden too you know or but like let's say it was russia right would we have like accepted that more because we're like in american film we're used to no, like no, no, no. foreign you, governments you, you misunderstand that, I mean? what my point is my point isn't who they said were the villains or whether we accept that or it's not. how they painted america as the villains no 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 it, it's it's how it, it was constructed in in the fabric of the film meaning that it was done in such a way that felt that it wasn't, there was no subtext to it. There was no, there was no, like we had to kind of search for that a little bit. It was just, we're going to tell you that America is really the bad guy. Yeah. Here, and then we're just going to move on with the rest so, of our jokes and shit. So I think they gave it to us in a very soft way at first. Cause re- remember the first time that they showed um, Starro, right. Mm-hmm. As like a very small starfish. And like, there were those like f- three or four astronauts in space, like playing around with it yeah. before it released the little thing that stuck to their eyes. Mm-hmm. One of the things I didn't notice is the fact that those um, astronauts had, like the American flags on their shoulder. So it was actually. Oh, I, I was under the assumption that it was America. From like, the beginning? That was because it, it was like Americans that were the, the people who were like, you could, they were they yeah, I mean, like an American. I, don't I, I missed that. Right. So oh, like, okay. but like, and I think the, the, the doctor guy, the guy who had the, all the, all the things mm-hmm. on his head, what was his name? Um, uh, I don't know. I want to call him the brain, but that probably is wrong. I think his name was like, John E. So Steve Aggie, I think he played John E. Camos. I think he, that was the guy who had the shit all over his head. Mm-hmm. Also, very inconvenient. Like, how does he sleep? Um, <laughs> but anyway, so um, so I, I love the fact that like they showed us before, like you know, Americans were involved in this thing, right? And to his point, he was like, you know, like all of this. Usually, these things Americans are involved in, but America will not stand to be involved in, like you know dirty things crime and and you know illegal testing on humans or aliens on american soil that's how america keeps its oh, yeah, hands sure. clean so yeah, yeah, i yeah. liked but, what they did there but but again that that goes to my like point that it, it was like it wasn't as if that was like revealed over the course of time that oh yeah america like i, I guess what i'm saying is and and this kind of uh factors into why i said like they, there were too many villains because between starro america in general um you can also lump in Peacemaker, right? That Peacemaker ended up being sort of like a, not necessarily a double agent because he was basically working on behalf of the the, the American government, but he turned on his own uh, crew. Um, you could throw him in. That Peacemaker is probably the, the more subtle, not subtle, but um, over the course of the entire film, it was even in terms of like his, his arc of like, I use your word there, um mm-hmm. uh, his 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 arc as in you, you know we see peacemaker basically tells us from the beginning yo i'll do anything for my country you know and then sure enough that plays out over the course of film that he'll literally do anything for his country you know um so that was like the best that they had but even that to me felt like a little like 
eh, because we didn't get to spend like that much time with Peacemaker. We, yeah. we got to know him, but we didn't really get to know him. And uh, I guess you get, in a, uh, I'm trying to think of who else might have been a villain in the film. Uh, the, oh, the dude with all the shit in his head. Uh, and again, I forget his. his yeah, his, his I don't necessarily think he was as much of a villain as he was a, um, like, you know, a, a scientist who cares more about science than like what it costs. Like he'll pay any cost in order to I mean, see wait, what you, happens. Who do you, what do you call that? That's, that's to me that <laughs> like, if you're willing to do evil shit <laughs> and you yeah. don't really care. It's McDonald's. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Listen, we don't care how the meat is made <laughs> as long as it's three ninety nine for yeah. the whole meal. Exactly. Right. Um, so, so I, you know, I, I, all of them together, what I'm trying to say is, is that the movie, uh, uh, to me, you know, these superhero movies or just, you know, these, uh, these movies that, you know, have like this horror, these heroic figures in them. They're only as good as the villains. The, the movie that taught me the, the most about this was the dark Knight, right? Mm-hmm. That it's because not necessarily of just Heath Ledger's performance as the Joker, but really as his whole entire story arc really sort of let you buy into what was happening on screen. It really sucked you in as like, okay, like I kind of agree with a little bit of what he's saying, you know, but he's also fucking a homicidal maniac, you know, but you still understand where he's coming from, at least to some degree, right? The same why we all loved Thanos, right? Is because we all bought into a little bit of what he was saying of like, okay, I see. and you saw his uh, Infinity War wasn't about the Avengers at all. That was, that entire movie is about Thanos. He's basically the protagonist in, in, that, in, that, in that movie that he's got the goal that he's trying to accomplish and all the Avengers are basically trying to stop him from doing it, right? But that's why we, we loved him, right? This movie has so many different like villains in it that it's just or, or so many villains that you're not really able to complete or fully flesh out their arcs that you're just kind of just like, eh, when it comes to the villains, right? Like when you named why this movie was so good, you named all of the protagonists as like, OK, this is why this movie is so good. When we talk about the Dark Knight or when we talk about Infinity or who do we talk about? We don't talk about the fucking Avengers when we, when we talk about Infinity. We talk about Thanos, right? That he was so good in that movie. Yeah. When we talk about the Dark Knight. We talk about the Joker. You know? So, you know, so I, I'm going to disagree with you in, in one sense, because I feel like we're at a point where for the average, you know, for, for someone, people like our age, right? Um, people who've grown up with a lot of these, like, like one song, not necessarily one song superheroes, but like, you know, like they're like the solo note, act, one saying. note. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one song. One song. <laughs> it's a lot of time to be given <laughs> But like these like one note superheroes, but like that's the wrong term because Superman isn't a one note superhero. Spider-Man is. is. A little bit. Um, kind of in a little bit of like, you know, you always know he's going to save the day. He, he's going to overcome whatever adversity he faces. Right. Sure, and sure. same thing for. Right. But like, so we've grown up with all of those guys. But I think we're at a point now in like a lot of these superhero genres where we don't really expect the hero to be as unflawed as Superman is. Right. Um Take yeah, the boy. Sure. Take the boys, for example. Giving them complexity, I guess, yeah. Is, is yeah, making them yeah. three dimensional instead of two dimensional. Yeah. We didn't like the boys because of the villains. Like there was no one villain. No, to- but that's but that's why I would disagree with you. We do like for for one, everybody is just completely infatuated with uh um what's the dude oh, uh, homelander homelander everybody's yeah. infatuated with homelander right because he's just fucking a weird fucking dude first of all he's he's a homicide maniac and also too he's he's complex it's not he is evil no doubt but he it's complex because of his backstory and 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 what he was made to be or what he's even imagined to be versus like what he actually is yeah uh but but i would also argue that there actually aren't <sighs> And and I don't want to say this because it's going to bite into a little bit of, of what I'm going to say later, but I'm not convinced that there there really is a true sense a hero in the boys. So, I, I think everybody's kind of like middle of the road at best. You yeah. Know? And, and so that's my point, right? Like, why did we love the boys? I really liked it. You really enjoyed it. It's because while he, Homelander was like the most notable villain right you also had stormfront right who was like this like nazi racist right we come we came to find out that and then you had like madeline sitwell who was like this like easy to hate like, corporate can, can ceo you, can person you tell me why that uh, the boys is wildly different than than the suicide squad movie we just got 
So I think I think they're oddly similar, right? I no, think- no, no, no. They're similar in the sense of what you're like the point that you're making. What what I'm saying the the, the biggest difference though is that you had an entire season or two so, yeah, seasons yeah, now. Yes. To, one is a show, one is a out, movie, right? Yeah. You you have a long time to work that out, so you can fully flesh out all of the characters. That is true. All I'm saying with Suicide Squad is the reason why I don't think it deserves the 91 percent it's gotten on Rotten Tomatoes isn't because I don't think James Gunn made. A a great movie it's because the thing that i find most important about these type of movies was the thing that kind of felt like it got like a a second a second um what do you want second fiddle it played second fiddle to everything else mm-hmm. james gunn you know what you're gonna get you're gonna get kind of an, a zany weird fucking story you're gonna get a lot of jokes a lot of comedy and you're gonna get a semi-competent if if not fully competent um story right we got all of that in 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 uh, and, and in so, so but he, here's the thing you got to give this movie mm-hmm. is to get all of that like to get the many and villains absolutely. right but to also be able to fall in love and really enjoy a lot of the characters whether it it's Bloodsport, time. Harley, Peacemaker, uh, you know whoever your favorite character was and like to be honest none of those were my favorite characters my favorite character was um the uh, the girl with the rats what was her name uh, oh yeah yeah she 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 I think she worked for a lot of people um. Uh, let me see if I can find her name here. Yeah, I don't see her name here. I don't know why. Um, but I thought she was one of my favorite characters. Like, just her, like, her whole, st- her, br- I mean, uh, great- Daniela uh, Melquire. Yeah, I mean, really good actress. Name. Yeah. I love her storyline. I love her, like, her whole, like, too. Yeah, Ratcatcher 2. I love her yeah. whole story of, like, yeah, I don't really, like, give a fuck. I don't, you know, like, uh, I, I'm I'm on the side of the rats and I'm here because like I kind of have to be here not because I want to yeah, be here. Sorry, my, my pup just came in the room. Yeah. <laughs> but she just had a great story. I think she was oh, a really good sounds. actress. She brought a really good uh, tone and energy to the film. I mean, obviously Id- Idris Elba was great. Margot Robbie was good. Um, but to sum everything up, the reason we like the boys is because like there's no like one true villain, mm-hmm. but there are a bunch of really there are a bunch of really interesting characters you can grow to love. Um, I feel like this movie was able to do in two hours and 12 minutes what the boys is able to do over the course of two seasons. Like, yeah. you know, I really, really enjoyed a lot of these characters, even fucking weird, like ones who only lasted a moment, like TDK and the Javelin and Pete Davidson's character, like Blackguard. Yeah. And the but, Weasel. But I, but again, like, the, I think that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm not saying that he did that poorly or like you didn't follow up. We, I think I fell in love with the characters as, as much as everybody else did. But what I'm saying, when I look at the film overall, the reason why I can't give it a 91, I would absolutely give his character development for the protagonist a plus. Mm-hmm. Like he, he did that. He made us fall in love with a fucking shark. Like yeah. he's a shark. Yeah. And he's like the best character in the movie yeah. as yeah. far. And he says like, you know, a total of like Hand, 10 worlds. <laughs> you, know I mean? like friend. you know, and, it, and he made us fall in love. That that takes talent to fucking do that. That's that's a talent to, to make us fall in love with a shark who only says like 10 words, a combination of 10 words throughout the entire film, right? But looking at the film overall, how I judge these uh, superhero movies is really by the villains. How well the villains are thoroughly uh, um, fleshed out and 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 um, conveyed to us. And I don't think that that was done well by any stretch of the imagination with the, with this movie. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I I would still give it a, a decent rating. Yeah, I just don't. I, I guess when when I started started seeing all the scores for it, I was like, oh shit! Like I was like looking for certain things in the movie. Then when I saw the movie, I was like, I don't understand the score. Like I, yeah. I get like a somewhere between a seventy-five and eighty-five. I get that ninety-one. The villain has to be top-notch for me to give it any that much. Yeah, approach and, and, I, and I think we're going to start to see more of that shift, where it's going to shift away from like these like singular. Um, larger than life, like how do we beat this guy type of villain? Like, you know, the Thanos is the Banes, the Jokers, like those type of guys to, um, you know, God, I hope not to, to more like, you know, the, the, here's some really great people up against like this, like really like tough, like, challenging not, obstacle. I, I hope like, not. I think if we get more of the boys, obviously the boys season three is coming. No, what, I think that's going to be but great. I think that's a, that's the weird thing or not the weird thing, but that's the thing about the boys is that they actually do have fleshed out villains. Like it's not, yeah. it's, it, you're, you're, you're posing them against each other, but they're not really, that's not the, the boys do have villains that are f- like you understand where they're yeah. coming from, at least to some degree. But so like, here's the thing, though, right? Like when you yeah. look at some of the big characters, Superman, Batman, Aquaman, mm-hmm. uh, The Flash, and some of the other characters that have upcoming movies coming down the pipeline, mm-hmm. like how much more story is there? Like Batman, like he's already faced his biggest villain, 
the Joker and Bane. Oh no, right? absolutely not. No, no, no. I think Ra's al Ghul. There's, like, there's, who else? There's, you see, but but uh, so the so the the problem is is that we we look at it as in what we've already seen. Um, where filmmakers, I think, look at it is there's a world of possibilities. James Gunn brought us a film with fucking Polka Dot Man, and we were still riveted by the, by the movie. Yeah, right? I don't know there, if we were riveted. Oh, we're not riveted by his character, dude. No, absolutely, because like he, his, so, the, his plight of seeing his mom yeah. <laughs> as literally everybody. But know? the short question there is like for like some of the bigger characters, like Batman, Superman, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like who are who are, you know after you face Thanos, right? Like mm-hmm. you have to go out to like you know Loki facing the TVA and like these other like celestial like outer worldly space beings right so i feel like what we're going to get more of is like for even in loki what we got was not like one huge uh villain that you thought was like oh here's this like all powerful being and how do we overcome this thing but it's like you know here's like a group of people that we love facing these like obstacles I, you know, I think yeah, yeah, but, I think that's what we're gonna get more of. I could be wrong. No, no, and you might be right or wrong, but I guess what the the point is that I'm trying to make is is that the obstacles that they face, uh, they're posed by like a villain, right? Like somebody's gotta be in opposition. What we look for in these films isn't just to see somebody do dope shit, right? That 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 might be what they you know put in the trailers. That might be what like it's like the fancy thing to look at. But in reality, the degrees in which we say whether a film's a good or not, right? Like, I, I would assume that you would rate, like, The Dark Knight, like, one of the top yeah, yeah, for comic sure. book movies, right? You'd rate Infinity War, one of the top comic book movies, right? The, uh, what I'm saying is that the, the commonality among them is that their villains are are just as good as their uh, or their antagonists are just as good as the protagonists. That you don't have this like fucking like that's why we fucking hate all the, all like the ninety shit, right? Is be, is because they have these really wooden fucking villains that is like, ha ha, I ain't want to stick up the world, and then yeah, yeah. the fucking protagonist comes is like, yeah, I do dope shit and I stop you, and that's the way we. Except do this for thing. Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mister Freeze, I feel like he gets, he gets <laughs> everybody uh, yeah. freeze. I did enjoy <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mister Freeze. Great story yeah. behind it too. Yeah, it was all right. It was it was it was, uh, it was jarring to see him in that fucking costume and shit. It was just like Arnold, you just did Predator. I don't know why. Get, get down and <laughs> freeze, like, freeze, Arnold. Just say freeze. <laughs> don't say get down. Take two. Get in the chopper. There's get no down there's and no chopper, freeze while Arnold. I get in the chopper. There's no chopper. Oh, God, here. Yeah, we this, have no chopper for you. <laughs> you're on a different movie, Arnold. Wasn't wasn't in the budget. I know. <laughs> he just combines all of his films. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, look at that predator over there. It's like, I don't know. That's not wrong movie. We're not, it's uh, Batman. Yes, freeze. You see him with the fucking cowl on. It's Batman. <laughs> He's just standing right there. Um, you did anyways, no wrong though. Anyways, man, uh, that, we chopped it up about uh, Suicide Squad. Look, I, I'm 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 not trying to take anything away from James Gunn. I think he's a fucking master storyteller. I just wouldn't rate. Suicide Squad as high as everybody else rated it because I felt like the villains or the antagonists in this, you know, uh, were were lacking in depth. You know, uh, I think possibly Peacemaker was like the most in depth of them all, and even he was still, I feel like, lacking to be considered in that ninety percent, you know, echelon of uh, of uh, movies overall, but much less, uh, you know, superhero movies. So, anyways. Anyways, Fair great enough. movie uh, overall. Yeah, I really um, enjoyed it. I watched it again. For sure, for sure. Look, let's move on.